Hello and welcome to another episode from The Water's Edge where you catch up with me today with one aim in mind and that is to break one of my long-standing PBs. Now if you follow our channel well you might remember a few months ago we done a video titled The Forgotten Species of Carp Waters and we went to a local carp water to try and catch some of the big roach that live in there. Now unfortunately we didn't manage to do that, we had a brilliant day's fishing, some really nice tench and some bream, but none of the big roach. So we're back on that mission again today, but we're at a different venue and we're probably at one of the best venues all round really for carp, bream, tench, catfish, you name it, they're massive in here. But we're at Homersfield and it is well and truly known for its massive roach. So that is what I'm hoping to break my PB on. Now obviously Homersfield is a syndicate water but there is a couple of ways that you can fish it if you're interested. One is you can book the lodge at the other end of the lake and it gives you access to a couple of swims down there. Or the second way is you can book a guided day or tuition day with Phil Spinks. Now luck would have it is I work on a weekly basis with Phil so I twisted his arm a little bit and I persuaded him to come down for a fishing day with us and that's exactly what we're doing. So Phil is just up the swim to my left. I've got the rods out fishing away in here and hopefully one of those massive roach is going to come our way. So I think it's time that I freshen these rods up, get the swim going a bit and hopefully we'll have some decent fishing to show you in a bit. Well, there we go, that didn't take too long. And the thing that I'm most happy about is speaking to Phil before we got down here, he said, once you get your first bite, tends to be that you, you know, you're in for a quite a good day's fishing. So I got the first bite and I'm attached to the first fish. It feels like a roach. They're like, they're quite distinctive with the, the head shakes. And I don't know, there's something about fishing here that just gets you excited every time you get a bite because you know it's done roach to over four pound i mean <laughs> that would just be insane but if we can just break the pb today that is what we're after so i'm going to coach this one in and see what the first fish has to offer there we go he's not big by Homersfield standard but when you're classing fish of this sort of size as you know probably average maybe below average you know you're in a pretty special place so yeah I hope he's not going to be the biggest one but I don't know what is he 10 ounces maybe but what I'll do is we've uh, got to keep it just over there Martin the owner here sometimes likes just to have a look at these roach check them over and whatnot so Keep a couple of them in there for him to look at later, but hopefully we're going to get a couple that are at least two and a bit times as big as this as we get on throughout the day. Well, I was just putting that other roach back and the other rod's gone, so potentially what Phil said is once they move in, they are going to be fairly not well I'm not gonna say easy but readily available to catch it's just then trying to find a bigger fish this one feels okay they're all gonna feel pretty nice because I've only brought my little float rods with me so trying to to keep things nice and balanced I'm just gonna try and guide this one away from these reeds that are just down here but yeah he's definitely a better fish Yeah, he is definitely a better fish, and for a second fish, not bad at all. But we'll give you a better look at him. <laughs> I think one more kick away at the net and he would have got off. He was so lightly hooked. 
But check that out for the second fish I've ever caught from this complex. Phil was right, you know. Once you get the first bite, the other ones come quite quick. This one was a few seconds after putting that last one in the net. And that is a wicked roach. I'm not going to weigh him, but I mean, he's well over a pound and a half. I don't think he's going to make the magical two. But if there's anything to go by, we are in for a good few hours fishing. Right, well, we've got currently no rods in the water, so it's probably a good time to talk you through how I got to this point. So, we obviously are here with Phil. It would be stupid to ignore his venue knowledge, so I'm not going to lie, I did wean him for a bit of information. What I've done at the start of the session is he's told us the spot out there and how many wraps it was. It was 13 wraps. So I've put the fishing rods to 13 wraps and then the spot rod the same. And then I kicked off the session with basically a selection of white and red maggots with a few casters so five or six bombs of that went out there and then i'll put the fishing rods over the top now i'll quickly show you the rig while we're out of the water it's nothing complicated it's a little helicopter rig and a closed block end maggot feeder it's pretty much my standard sort of specimen style i use this for tench roach whatever it may be i use this style of rig it's just so reliable but what i'm going to do is i'm going to get this one baited up and fire it back out there and hopefully you know there's going to be a few more fish and we're going to have a real good few hours fishing just fill this feeder up and then i need to get buckled down and get the other one out there because these roach aren't going to catch themselves when we're sitting here out the water but there we go all ready to fire right there to get that one on the spot and do the other one So much for getting the other rod ready. I was just putting the last maggot on and filling the maggot feeder, and the rod that we literally just cast and clipped the bobbin on has gone. So I'm going to guess now the fishing's going to get pretty hectic. And we actually only started just after lunchtime today. Just fishing a few hours, sort of in the evening before it gets dark, is often the time where the bigger fish can be found. So I expect the fishing just to get better and better from here on in. But we're going to have another. I don't know, I'm going to say average, but it's probably not average for everywhere, but average for here, Roach to show you in a sec. There we go. Certainly no record breaker, but if they're going to keep coming as quick as that, I think it literally is a numbers game to be able to find ourselves the one that we were so trying to catch. And I haven't actually told you what the magical weight is yet, so the weight we're trying to beat is two pounds and one ounce that is my pb and we actually caught that on camera as well on the river yeah so that's a river pb but it's my biggest roach ever and that's the target that we're trying to beat so this one isn't troubling it on the scales we're going to get him slip back and get another bait Gonna some say how you get it on, but this looks like you've answered the question. It's been um, fast and furious all afternoon. I don't know about you, but I've struggled to keep two rods in the water at once a lot of the time. Yeah, it feels like a bit of a roach highway. You just put one one in, the other one goes, but still none of those big ones for me yet. 
No, I haven't had anything huge. I've had a few nice ones, but I haven't had anything to get the knees knocking. But. Right, well, I'm going to leave you netting this one, and I'm going to get back to it. Good luck. Well, he's only a little fella, this one, but um, I was getting him a bit bigger earlier on, but it's gone absolutely mad this afternoon with the amount of bites. But it's a, it's a case of just plodding through these, because you never know what the next bite's going to be. Well, what a mega evening it has turned out. The wind has dropped off. It's really nice now, nice temperature. You can tell spring is just around the corner, but normal service resumed. We went to have a quick look how Phil's getting on and he's pretty much the same as me, struggling to keep on top of the rods. But at the moment, neither of us connected with one of those really big fish I would so dearly like to catch. But I'm gonna plod away and fish perhaps I don't know a potentially sort of a small way into dark just to see if one of the bigger fish you know quite often do slip up as the light levels drop so I'm gonna get this one in and I wanted to show you it's still a nice fish I'm just gonna hand him in I think and that is another fish easily over the pound and it's hard to sort of not be well, I don't want to sound despondent with that because it's ridiculous roach fishing. But you know, when you come and you've got real aspirations of breaking your PB, I'm not going to call these nuisance because they're not. I'd happily catch roach over a pound all day long, and I'm sure most people would. But you just know what special fish are out there. One of them has got to slip up. But like I said, it's gonna we're going to fish a little while on yet, and as this light level drops, there is a real chance that one of the bigger ones will come along. Right, I'm just rigging up a slight tactical change in the form of a couple of reasons in why I said one is because it's quite hard to keep two rods in the water, really busy catching some nice fish, and the other one, as I said, the light levels are slowly falling, so potentially the bigger fish are going to come a little bit more active. So exactly the same rig, but all I'm doing is I'm going to slip on a little mini 12mm boilie just to be a bit more selective. Hopefully I can leave this one out there while I play the numbers game on the other rod. And that sort of hedges my bets then. If they want a numbers game, just eventually a bigger one slips up or a bigger bait and try and target one that way. So that's the plan. One rod on one, one rod on the other. Going to fish away hard now and see if we can get anywhere near that piece. as long as you promise to sell your buddies who are about twice as big as you where we are. <laughs> got, got that one on the drop. I didn't even get the bobbin on and I must say it feels a little bit heavy. Now I'm really starting to worry because there's little bits of weed that just sort of stick out in front of the swim and occasionally it gets stuck in there but I just don't know. I'm just going to take my time, be steady with it, and see what we've got. One pound and 13 ounces, they're slowly getting bigger. Well, it just falls a few ounces short of what we were after, but when they are that big, they are just ones to be admired. Someone's always said to me, two fish that look big is perch and roach. When they get to sort of specimen size, for me, they just look pretty special. Well, 
Well, I really enjoyed that this afternoon. It's been really busy fishing and that's probably the best two that I've had. They're not quite two pounders, I wouldn't have thought, but two really nice roach. And there's quite a few more in the net as well. So I'm gonna have an early pack up before it gets dark and I'm gonna watch Widget fish on into dark and see if he gets his two pounder. Well, unfortunately, that's it. We fished uh, about an hour into darkness and the PB never came, but these are two of the best from an unbelievable day's roach fishing, both of them one pound 13, like peas in a pod, but numerous fish over a pound and a half. And I said at the start, I generally do think Homersfield is probably the best roach fishing in the country. So thanks Phil for bringing us down. Thanks Martin for letting us fish it. Hopefully, we can come back one day and attack that PB again. But we'll pop all the details of Homersfield in the description below. They've also got a YouTube channel. It's well worth a watch to see what's happening in the lake and keep up to date with it. But that's it from us on this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you again on the next one.